primetime Deion Sanders. I'm Chris Rose. Deion, we should all be smiling because we're football fans. We were treated to the game of the year down in the bayou. The Niners and Saints combined for 94 points. I'm telling you, if we see this in a rematch of the NFC title game, I ain't going to be mad. I'm not mad. Too, too bad these, both of these teams are in the NFC because that would have been a heck of a Ooh. Super Bowl. Ooh. That was entertainment at its best. Oh, I see. Somebody plugging for realignment. I'm going to write that one down. That's very, very good. We'll break that down, what it means to the NFC playoff chase, but let's get to a little Sunday night football. Good one between the Seahawks and the Rams out at the Coliseum. Just soak it in. Why don't you? Pete Carroll he used to coach a little bit of football in that place at the Coliseum. Look at him. He's almost 70 years old. He's fired up because they can clinch the playoff first with a win. Todd Gurley rode his uh, stationary bike to the game, apparently. First quarter, Malcolm Brown. It's, it's not Gurley plugging it in. And the Rams running game was working after his fourth touchdown of the year. Second quarter, Jared Goff. Working the play action. Robert Woods, boy, he's been special, Dion. Yeah, yes, he has. I mean, he's been delivering. You have a Cooper Cup on the other side with that Woods. Let me tell you something, man. He gets it done. That was his first touchdown of the season. As for Rashad Penny, such a critical runner in that system the last few weeks. Goes down with a knee injury on the hit by Taylor Rapp. He was done for the evening. As, Praying for you, man. As for the Seahawks, offensively, you know, Brian Schottenheimer trying to dial up something special on fourth and one. And look what happens here. Uh, Malik Turner. Oh, Dion, you got to hang on to that, kid. You got to have that. You got great ball placement, great play call. You got to make that catch. Next Seahawks possession, third and seven. Wilson looking for Jacob Hollister, who's really come on in recent weeks. But, Dion, you got to have that one. Yeah, they hitting that there across the middle. I understand that one. He heard footsteps. So later on in the Grown second, uh, Jared Goff's like, give me some of that. And he finds his buddy Cooper Cup, who gets wide open at the goal line. One of the best in the game to me, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, the guy knows how to play the game. He can run all routes, and he stays open. Third quarter, Seahawks get back into it, thanks to its D. Quandre Diggs, who came over in that trade with the Lions, like, I'll take that, thank you, pick six. What happened, Dion? Never saw him. Never saw him. Never uh, saw him whatsoever. And the receiver stops on the route. The receiver has to continue to run the route through. Seahawks did miss the PAT. Now, later on in the third, Zerline lining up from 37, gets swatted away by Rasheem Green, who used to play at USC in that Coliseum. And uh, let's remember, Zerline missed a huge kick against Seattle in the Emerald City of I mean, week five. So just put that in your mental Rolodex, if you will. So the ensuing Seahawks possession, Russell Wilson. Boy, that Rams defense was awesome. Sacked him five times. Oh, Aaron they, Donald. they bring heat. And the big fella starts it all. You're going to take two or three guys to accommodate him to keep him off the quarterback's butt, and everyone else is going to eat when that happens. Hey, Todd Gurley hasn't been super explosive this year, but he's still strong, Prime. Yeah, he is. He is good. I mean, people talk about explosiveness, him not being who he used to be. I think he's still that guy. The offensive line need to be who they used to be. are still one through six as when Sunday started, but it all kind of got shaken up. The Niners went from five to one. The Packers went from three to two. The Saints went from one to three, and the Seahawks went from two to five. I know it sounds a little confusing, but let's just talk a little bit about the Sunday night game. All right, so the Rams back-to-back -back impressive performances with wins over Arizona and Seattle. I know you counted them out a few weeks ago, but it looks I like... I just don't trust them. Still, even after don't this trust performance? Them. No, whatsoever. I mean, they play well when they want to. It, 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 it's, it, it's like a bad little kid, man. It's it just, it just bad for no reason. There's no reason they need to play bad at times. Then they come up and surprisingly, they get up for the games it seems as though they need to get up for. But the games that they feel like they have an easy win, they don't get up for. Uh, this Jekyll and Hyde stuff, Houston, we're going to get to that later. They're playing the same exact way, and it frustrates me because they're too good to be that bad. Isn't it possible that we should give some credit, though, to the coaching staff? Because this offensive line suffered a ton of injuries. They were remarkably inconsistent. Maybe it just took them a few weeks to kind of figure things out because they got slapped around by Baltimore on that turf pretty good a few Monday nights ago. So now they've started to put it together. Can't they put it together for a playoff run? 
Yeah, they could put it together for a playoff run. I mean, everybody been slapped around by Baltimore, and we got to quit giving passes because every team is dealing with injuries in the NFL. We can't pacify a team just because you're hurt. Everybody's hurt. You always give them a pass. I, Everybody's a pass. hurt. Everybody it's has someone pass. significant hurt. All I'm saying is that, that they had problems you, you live on the in, offensive You live line. in California. I think you live in California. That may be why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that what it right, is? Close to the stadium? That's true. Shh. Yeah. Don't, don't tell anybody, yeah. but four of yeah. the five yeah, Rams offensive linemen are my neighbors. Shh. Dion, don't tell yeah. them anything. Yeah. By the way, so, you know, it's interesting. The Rams have the Cowboys. Then they take on the Niners here on NFL Network on that Saturday game. They finish with Arizona. They win out. If Minnesota slips up, you just never know. They could be playing January. You never know. Never know. They could be playing January. You never know. You never you know. You never know. And those, all those teams that you just mentioned, they could beat. Okay. All right. Let's get to one of the yeah. bigger games.